may be surprised by the title of this manual. Actually, this is a perception that there is difference between style of male and female writers. And this was the first area in literature which I mentioned in the previous module where we try to understand relationship between a writer's style and gender. And this is the point where we reach now after understanding what is style and what is literary style. The author herself a woman but a modern one of those writers who are called modernists in literature a very great prose writer in the Virginia Woolf. She has noted difference in literary styles of male and female writers. Her point of view is that there is difference. And this difference she indicates in the choice of sentence structure. And these terms, female sentence and male sentence, it refers to the structure of sentences selected by male authors and female authors. She says that there is difference between sentence structures. She has noted this difference in the work of Dorothy Richardson, who was Dorothy, here is her image. I have selected a work to explain the idea of female sentence from the work of this author. And actually, Virginia Woolf has selected the work of this author because in the sentences of this author, she finds femaleness in grammar. Here you see two titles. The first one is Pilgrimage, the title of Pilgrimage, the collection of 13 volume collection of her novels. And one of them is The Tunnel. And uh, the examples we would be discussing now, they are based on The Tunnel, which is one of the novels from Dorothy's collection of novels that is called Pilgrimage. Uh, let me explain that uh, what is Pilgrimage here in the title. You all know pilgrim, pilgrimage, these terms are related with spiritual journey. Hajis are called pilgrims. So other people who go to holy places, who visit holy places, we call them pilgrims. So pilgrimage is spiritual journey and here it is not actually any journey like that. It is journey within the spirit, within the self of the heroine of the novel. And that's why the title is heroine of the novel that in fact reflects the author's own self, author's own journey into herself. So it is a kind of autobiographical work. The work that is based on life of the author is called autobiographical work of literature. So after this introduction, one thing that uh, is particular about this selection is its relationship with gender. Because the author and her heroine both belong to middle working class. But they live in London. London is a metropolitan modern lifestyle. Here elites, lit people of literature, people of science, they live. And the heroine mixes up with them and 
attends their debates on different issues, takes interest in different uh, conversations, sits among the elites and the writers. Okay, that's why we say, we can say, she crosses boundaries of gender and class. Let's see what happens with this gender and class crossing in this novel. To present a life free from masculine norms, because the heroine Miriam, her name was Miriam, she comes from a lower middle class where you know males dominate. Everything is done according to masculine norms and conventions. He has come from that kind of surrounding, that kind of uh, circumstances. So, here in London, she has joined as a receptionist in some office and uh, she is free here from masculine control. So, free from masculine norms, the novelist adopted a literary style because both the heroine and the novelist herself, they are the same. They represent each other. So, that's why the same thing happens with the author. She came from the same background from which her heroine came and uh, she comes to London, lives over there. She is free from masculine control and she is also free from masculine writing style. She adopts a very different style. She breaks the conventions of writing also. For example, role of narrator is taken up by consciousness. Usually, when uh, stories are told, short story, novel, etc., the author creates a mask and that mask is called narrator. So, author remains behind the narrator. And narrator is linked with the character. Now, there are two possibilities. Narrator who tells the story and character who is part of the story. They are the same person. Or narrator is outside the story, just tells about the action of the story and character is inside the story. They are two different persons. Okay. Now, what she does, Dorothy does, she gives the task of narration to consciousness. So, this is wonderful because usually when narrator and character are different, narrator gives its uh, his or her own comments on the actions of the character. But she does hear that narrator does not involve in the expression of feelings and experiences of the character. So, consciousness is directly approached. It is consciousness that tells the story. Okay. Traditionally, it is explained here and I have uh, already explained, so we should not repeat it. But if narrator's help is not available to the reader, now see, the role of narrator is almost zero in this technique. But if you exclude narrator, the reader faces trouble in understanding the story because narrator supports the reader. So, he, she cannot find out even referent of a pronoun. For example, Aslam is a teacher. He teaches English in a university. Now, see, we know that this he, the pronoun, refers to Aslam. So, we can determine the referent of this pronoun easily. Okay. 
Now see, this is except from Richardson's The Eternal, the novel we are talking about. It is like dropping everything and walking backward to something you know is there. However, see the novel's title is The Eternal. So it is a kind of passage from a tunnel. It is like dropping everything and walking backward where you drop something to something you know is there. Okay. However, far you go out in the tunnel, you come back. I am back now. Now see this shift. Suddenly, the pronoun I is used. Now who is referent of this I? The shift from you to I makes difficult to tell who is the referent of this pronoun. The reader, because usually you refers to the reader. When the narrator involves the reader in the story, he directly addresses the reader by pronoun you. But see, here I is also used at the end of the excerpt. So, this sudden shift in pronoun confuses the reader. The style is writer based. Reader is helpless. Such style of writing is called writerly style. Because we are at the mercy of the writer. No support is available in form of any narrator. The writer is directly talking about the consciousness of the character. Consciousness talks to us. And consciousness, you know, what is that? Stream of thought is going on. There are shifts, fluctuations in thoughts and ideas. There is no sequence, no order. The same thing comes on the paper. How can reader find out the order? And without order, no meaning can be made out. The writer uses language not to transfer our experiences, but to imitate our experiences. We often say language expresses our thought. So, language is some, uh, some, uh, something like a container. We put something into it and then it passes through uh, uh, the container to some other source. Okay. But here language is not container of our experiences, our ideas. It is not just carrier. Rather, language itself becomes our experiences. So, this is the difficulty how both become one. As thoughts are shifting every moment, there is no order. When this flow is copied in sentences, so it becomes fragmentary and complex as I already explained. Such sentences are called female sentences. And uh, from such sentences, Virginia Woolf says, we can know that the author has used female sentences, the author is female. And this is how she associates Richardson's sentences with female sentences. Now, some example of female sentences, they are coming direct from the consciousness. The winter may pa. The winter may pa. The winter may pass. Repetition. The academy. Now, suddenly the topic is changed. From winter, the character comes to the academy, the academy. What is there? There is picture of some academy, a picture and very bright. Now, description of the picture starts. Colors, a woman sitting by the roadside with a shawl around the shoulders. The woman in the picture was a housekeeper. This except is from the tunnel that is part of pilgrimage. Now, see how we can make sense of this whole sense, uh, whole except. What is this except? It is full of fragments, pieces, repetitions, 
complexity increases through fragments such sentences are called female sentences and they are abound they are frequently used in the tunnel conclusion is that sentence is neither male or female it has no direct link with patriarchy difference or power because when we talk about language and gender we relate it with patriarchy with difference etc writers of both sexes can use fragmentary sentences so how can we particularly associate usage of such kind of sentences only with female authors this is quite difficult because there are male authors who have also used these sentences so sentences have no gender we reject the idea of female sentences or female literary style as was pointed out by virginia wool with reference to richardson's novel